So yeah, I don't know if you were um were you watching television this weekend? Because apparently something happened. I don't know. Uh, a little bit. I was away for part of the weekend, but I was home by last night. Do you mean on Food Network Tournament of Champions where Tiffany Faison totally owned Amanda Freitag again? Because that was epic. And that might have been it. That might have been it. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, no, wait. It was when a rich man slapped a rich man on live television in front of tens of thousands of viewers. And uh, all the white people decided we get to have an opinion about it. My opinion. If is, I have to hear it's just alopecia, it's not like she has cancer one more time. My my ta- here's my take on it. This is an entirely different r- level of reality where no one ever faces consequences. It is has no social, moral, or ethical relevance to anyone who lives in the real world, uh, because they can do whatever the night they want, and we can't. Because um, they're talking about possibly taking away his Oscar, and I'm like, that's interesting because we didn't have that conversation with Adrian Brody. Brody just grabbed Halle Berry and shoved his tongue down her throat. I wonder what the difference is. No, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Night. This is they're a total different universe. That's this different space time. They, any, but there are there are tiers because yeah. for black performers and entertainers, there's a higher standard. Like Will Smith has spent the last thirty years working his night off to be the black guy that's not threatening to white people. And today, all the white people are like, like Judd Apatow was like, he could have killed him. Come on now, <laughs> really? I mean, well, to be fair, he's Judd Apatow. So, yeah. I mean, that's that that's 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 a big problem for anybody. All right. That having been said and to set up a little bit of our very first story. Yes, we have one related already. I don't know. The intro going each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience go out in the. Worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible shit. Bring back here for a little segment. We like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? Crazy. No, the Vaughn is, is goofing. Crazy yeah, so, you know what? I, I can't mess with it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, everyone had an opinion. You're right about that. And they felt like they needed to share those, especially on the Twitters. They felt like they needed to share those opinions directly with Will Smith. Oh, can, oh, oh, no. You can do that with, with celebrities on Twitter. You, you can you can talk when they're when they're there, except and that's this is the hitch. <laughs> yeah, hey, see what I did there. Um, Will Smith doesn't have one. Montgomery County, Maryland. One of Maryland's most powerful elected officials is being confused for actor Will Smith, who slapped the Academy Awards presenter Chris Rock in the face Sunday night after he made a joke about the hairstyle of Smith's wife, actor Jada Pinkett Smith, on national television. Some of the messages directed to Senator sta- to State Senator Will Smith, uh, the Senate Judicial Proceeding Committee chair, uh, lawyer, and veteran, have not been kind. In fact, some were outright vulgar. Why you hit Chris Rock, bitch? Said one message posted on uh, the uh, Twitter page. Um, I threw my remote at my TV so my five-year-old daughter wouldn't see your violent behavior. Um, well. She saw yours, though. Have we gotten to the point? How, how long? Are you new to Twitter? Do you not understand how this shit works? Do you not understand? It is a worldwide thing. And I'm going to, I'm going to blow your fucking mind here. In the world, two people can have the exact same name. I know. When that name is, when that name is William Smith, there's going to be a few. I mean, I don't know how familiar you are with, with Western naming conventions. However, both William and Smith are very common names, if you didn't know this. 
Which is why what you need to do, you see, is check yeah. who you're tweeting at. I've made this mistake before, but it has never been to tell someone horrible things about them. Somebody actually tried to hate tweet me once, <laughs> but they accidentally sent it to voice actress Tara Strong. <laughs> Because I think her Twitter is just at Tara. <laughs> um, I'm not cool enough that my Twitter account is just my first name, but I guess somebody thought I was. And I'm like, wow, she's confused today. Sorry. There is also a Twitch streamer named Will Smith who had an amazing time last night. Like before all this, I think he had like something like, I want to say 100,000 followers, but he probably got way more. There's, I think he's a reporter named Matthew Gertz. Oh, he has a fun time every time Beavis, yeah. does, or is it Beavis or Butthead? Every I time Matt head. Gates does some dumb shit, people are all over this guy's dick. And he's like, I'm not that, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not him. Thank you. It's a different letter. Y you know, some people actually start putting this shit in their biography. No, I'm yeah. not him. And no one reads it. No. Like, good God, you can type the words, but you don't know how to fucking operate Twitter. What the fuck? Uh, all right, um, moving right along. And this is from Ohio. And ah, oh, yes, it happened again. This almost feels quaint now. Your chicken tenders are not a police matter. Ohio woman called 911. Fudge beef over KFC drive through order. Since some citizens remain confused about the proper use of the 911 system, a reminder, do not call the police emergency line if you have encountered a chicken difficulty at KFC. Tuesday. Why is it always chicken? Why is, I don't know why it's always chicken. It's always chicken. Like, I, I like chicken too, but. Who doesn't like chicken? Why is it always oh, chicken? I don't know why. I don't know why. Don't know why it's always chicken, but it's always chicken. Is the thing. Um, but uh, yeah, on Tuesday evening, Lisa Castro called nine one one to report being quote upset because she only got four pieces of chicken instead of eight, and that the manager of the KFC in suburban Cleveland, Ohio, quote won't give her the rest of the chicken. The sixty-two year old Castro who lives two miles from the KFC in Euclid, uh, Euclid, yeah, asked uh, an officer to be dispatched to the restaurant, saying she would be waiting in a Dodge SUV. But arriving at the KFC, a Euclid Police Department officer explained to Castro that her chicken beef, I uh, see what she did there, was not a police matter. No charges were filed. While we're here to serve the public, an incorrect drive through order is not a police matter. I, I just, I, I just. Let me speak to your manager just isn't strong enough. I just, what are they going to do? Are they going to put you in a chicken jail? Is that right? What you're like, are they going to, are they going to arrest the kid working the KFC drive through window because he shorted you four tenders? Like it's. it's Go to, no, the way you deal with that problem is you take your order, you take your receipt, you go inside, and you say, hey, you shorted me four tenders. And, and I hate giving you this information because I know none of you will use it wisely or someone out there won't. You know what you do when the store will not respond to your problem? You call corporate. Now... That that's that is it's a terrible thing to do because the fallout from that is inevitably shitty. However, it is the appropriate escalation for the situation. Not you can even use you can even use Twitter. Oh, shit. Christ. If you use Twitter, you get enough people that has become our new customer service. Social media. All you have to do is get enough people. And be popular enough. You can force Not even, because 
I said something about an Amazon delivery. I didn't tag Amazon. Nobody retweeted me. Right. And within five minutes, Amazon service was like, how can we help? And I'm like, I don't need you to help. That's why I didn't tag you. It's creepy as shit, isn't it? I'm pretty sure they have searches set up. Get so in, you. Admit- God damn it. Stop. Like, if alone. you don't want to hear from the brand, don't mention the brand name is the lesson I learned that day. Because I was specifically trying not to get someone in trouble. And I said that in the tweet. Because he, like, tossed my package at my door. Nothing was broken. Nothing happened. So I wasn't looking to get anybody in trouble. And they're like, can you tell us more? And I'm like, no, I'm not a narc. (laughs) Um, You made that dude pee in a bottle. I'm not making his life worse. uh, Well, let's move on to Disney because they've had a bad few days. Well earned. I will point out. Um, But this is not because of that. If, if you're not following, following along, uh, Florida passed a terrible bill that, that forbids um, certain levels of grades to even acknowledge the existence of non-heterosexual relationships and genders and stuff like that. Um, and Disney's uh, Disney's corporate kind of sponsored those uh, lawmakers. Well, Disney people, wa- the Disney employees did a walkout and it was kind of a thing. This is completely different. I know. And this is also one of those, like, how did you guys not fucking, how did you? Disney said it regrets racist cheer by a high school team. Oh, I saw this. Disney said it regrets a performance at its Orlando theme park by a high school cheerleading squad after it received backlash for the routine depiction of Native Americans. Widely circulated video of the Port Neshi's Grove High School Indianettes from Texas shows the team dancing and chanting scalp them Indians scalp them while performing moves that appear to appropriate Native American culture in a parade at Disney's Magic Kingdom theme park. I did read a little about this, and here's the thing. It's not like they were taken by surprise because they they negotiated. They negotiated with this team because normally the team wears Native American-esque headdresses with their cheer uniform. Yes. And they were told they were not allowed to wear those. The spokesperson for the Indians, that, that's their school, that's still the Indians in 2022. Spokesperson said, this is our eighth time at Disney. They don't ask what you're going to do as far as performance. It's just contest video and they see the uniforms. They ask nothing else. This is the same performance we've done all eight times. Oh, yeah. Um, Plenty of time to have done something about this. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, Tara, it's only eight years. You know, that, that's, that's, do they really have enough time to react to it? just eight years that's that's fuck and they regret what the what the fuck does that what good is that what good is that i got your regret right here got a pile of shit in the other hand what's i can't tell the difference what the fuck yeah (laughs) eight years of now hold on correct me I, i could be wrong but are you in fact mocking an indigenous people i'm just asking it's just, it's just dawning on me. i know i know but i could be wrong here they only took down the fucking wench auction in pirates of the caribbean what like three years ago yeah the children's ride was auctioning off humans i want to point Back. out that that the guy who was in charge of the parks is bob chapik who is now the CEO of Disney. Which means that for the past eight years, this was on his watch. I'm just saying. (sighs) Also, do they know their chant doesn't even make sense? No, they don't. They don't. 
because it wasn't the Native Americans scalping people. No, it wasn't. It was white people scalping them. Yeah. Like, at least, if you're going to be racist as fuck, at least try to be correct. Right. Uh, let's, and speaking of someone who was not correct, I don't, this, put this into, further into the basket of, you know what, Tara, we could get elected if we wanted to. Um, false report leads state senator to call for an investigation into furries. State senator. Hey. Hmm? It's not going to be a long investigation, just hop on Reddit. <laughs> State Senator claimed false reports led him to express concerns over furries being catered to in school. Nebraska State Senator Bruce Bostelman, Republican, took to the state Senate floor on Monday and addressed his concerns that some schools were allegedly providing litter boxes for the use of students that self-identify as cats or dogs, who he referred to as furries. Bostelman said such a practice would be very disruptive to the school system. Quote, I'm a little shocked. It's something called furries. If you don't know what furries are, I love how he's like enlightening them. It's where school children dress up as animals, cats or dogs during the school day. Well, Bruce, um, not exactly. They meow and bark and interact with their school. No. With their teachers in this fashion. And now schools are wanting to put litter boxes in schools for these children to use. How is this sanitary? I, that's his concern here. Um, an Omaha-based journalist, John Kipper, reported that Boston and another state senator, Lynn Waltz, reached out to the school district named the rumors and were, quote, assured none of that happened. School districts across the country subjected to similar rumors have also denied them outright. Yeah, this was, I think <laughs> this was a Chan op. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. I love that they capped off this story with an adorable picture of a cat and a chihuahua. That's like, I think that's a chihuahua. Do we have art for this? Do we have any fucking, we need, we need fucking art for this. Do we have fucking art for this? I don't know. Cat and a dog or something. I don't fucking know. Like, not like they were going to put actual furries in this damn thing. You can. There's plenty of furries. Yeah, that's true. Like the, whose outfits are completely fine. They look like a mascot. Yeah, but this really wasn't anything to do or with them. Steampunk, whatever. This isn't anything. To do. I don't think they want to be associated with a Republican Senate. No, that's I true. Mean, the furries are like, you know what? <laughs> no, thank you. No comment. I'm pretty sure this was a Chan op, which in case you're not aware, sometimes 4chan gets a wild air up its ass and decides to do weird shit for various reasons. None of them good, usually. And they, they started spreading this rumor that on, on the interwebs. And here comes Bruce Bostelman. And I, I got to say, Bruce looks exactly like I thought Bruce Bostelman would look. Yeah. As, as that is, in fact, a Bruce Bostelman. That is one of them. Yes. Told you about the time I accidentally taught my husband's boss what furries were, right? No, probably, but you've said so we many had, horrible things. They all sort of blend together <laughs> after a while. We were at a party at Dan's former boss's house. And uh, I don't remember how we got on the subject, but I was saying that, like, I'm a big New York Mets fan, as you know. And there was one year that the Mets were in Pittsburgh for their series against the Pirates the same weekend as Anthrocon was in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh or Philadelphia? I don't know one of those cities in Pennsylvania. And they ended up at the same hotel. Mm -hmm. And a lot of hilarious pictures came out of that weekend. And uh, I'm sure. Yeah. And he says, well, what's what's Anthrocon? And I said, you know, it's the big furry convention. <sighs> I don't know why I didn't see it. I mean, but then the man says, well, what's furry? And, and that's, I realized that's the whole, sort of like like you're like oh no it's like in slow motion because i realized then what i've done and that there is no way out of it no so i explain it 
And I should say that this particular boss of dance had some impulse control issues, let's say. He, he was known to say inappropriate things in meetings and stuff. So for the rest of that party at his house, he introduced me as, this is Dan's wife. She's a furry. And I spent the whole night saying, I'm not, I'm not a furry. I just know what they are. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes the mouth moves faster than the brain and it gets me in trouble. Now, next one. I know what everyone is going to reference immediately and we will get to it. Okay. I know. Hold, can, just hold it in. Okay. Man tried to steal. Oh, no, the wrong one. I can give you the right one. Hold on. Yeah, you sent me the same one again. We're going to do it again. No. Um, man tried to steal SEAL Team 6 item. A contractor working at the Navy SEAL Museum was arrested yesterday for allegedly trying to steal a ballistic vest that was worn by a member of the team that raided Osama bin Laden's Pakistan hideout. Cops allege that Kendall Rust. Wow, that's. 30 was uh, working inside the museum in Fort Pierce, Florida. Of course it was fucking Florida. When an employee noticed that he was quote, acting suspiciously. And if you see something, say something too soon. Um, when Russ later packed up his tools and began to leave, the female uh, employee told cops, she quote, noticed a Navy seal ballistic artifact was missing from the room. Rust was in. Prize of the item's disappearance, a museum official contracted, uh, confronted Russ, who apparently copped to swiping the vest because he, quote, wanted to take a picture of it. Please recover the vest from Russ's toolbox. Now, I know you have been waiting. You have been busting at the, at, at, busting. Buddy, they won't even let me fuck it. I know. I know you were waiting for that. I know you were waiting. There you go. You can feel the relief now. Okay. Uh. I'm just amazed at the uh. awfulness of his excuse. I just want to take a picture of it. Yeah, you could do that where it was. <laughs> it's not, it's not like. No, I think we all know what you really wanted to do was wear it around and tell people you were on SEAL Team 6. <laughs> and that's, yeah, just, no, it's that, that is, I mean, there, there's stolen valor and then there's Jesus Christ. It's a felony larceny charge. Because really, that's one of those things, like, if you steal shit from a museum, that's one of those things where, like, how much was it worth? Well, you know. That's one yeah. of those things we call priceless. They don't put cheap shit in museums, to, generally. No. no. No, they don't. No, they don't. No. Just. Now, the Navy SEALs are mad at you. That they know your name, which that's probably not good. And I'm not saying they're going to hunt you down or anything, but you probably don't want to just run into any. Yeah. Because they're not going to be nice to you. Yeah. Yeah. Kendall Rust, <sighs> which sounds like the name of a one episode supernatural character. I was just thinking. I was thinking that I, I, it's the same thing. Final one is also Florida. And this one is, I am, this one actually made me gasp, but no one else, just me. Because I, I had the, the, the thought, the first thought I had going through my head when I saw the, the, the title here was, oh no, are the guitars okay? Clearwater Man survives Three story fall in Sam Ash Music Store burglary. I want you to look at this building. That's the Sam Ash in Florida. 
Look at the side of this fucking building. With like the fucking columns and that is some impressive shit. Yeah. Police say the man broke into the music store, which is located on McMullen Booth Road in Clearwater, and used a large open banquet hall. Uh that used to be a large open banquet hall. <clears throat> and for decades was the popular restaurant Topic Tree Inn at about 4.45 a.m. on October 20th. So they just kept all the architecture. They're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make Sam Ash here. Man got into the building through a window near the roof and walked a perimeter ledge around the building, lost his balance, and fell three stories, striking a lamp post and a guitar display on the way down. The suspect used an amplifier to break through a glass door and leave the building. I hope it wasn't vintage. He left a trail of blood, which was connected to him via DNA analysis. Okay, first of all, your grand plan is cat burglary. How are you going to get the shit back out? Are you going to open a door? Well, guess what happens when you open a door inside a retail establishment after hours? Yeah. I, it, that's not going to work. You got to have an exit strategy. Yeah. You, you got to figure some shit out. So that's the one thing. The second thing was he fell and then kept going, which is a little fucking impressive. Because trailing if I, blood around, you know what happens to me if I fall three stories? I'm just going to stay there. <laughs> I'm probably I'm not sure I would even be able to make a sound, but my ass is not getting up. I'm just like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> With everything they can arrest my ass. That's fine. I'm just going to be here. Done. That's not how stage dives work. Yes, retro, retro K283. Yes, not. No. I mean, also, he broke into the creepiest fucking guitar store I've ever seen. It's, they, yeah, it's an old, uh, it's an old motel and a banquet hall. And they bought it. They, they turned the Sam Ash into, which is kind of cool. I got it. I got That's weird. That's weird, but I love it. Um, it's one of the little bits of late stage capitalism that, like, yeah. And then there's that statue creepy. just accusing yeah. you. It's like a fucking glitch in the Matrix. It knows what you did. Um, cops had to marshal their forces to get the offender. Uh, you're going to hell. <laughs> I, I, dude, it's like a Looney Tune, right? Um, this is the Wiley Coyote of guitar heists. Because I'm sitting there. Guitars are not that strong. They'll hold up. But if you say land on one, it's over for the guitar. So I'm sitting there going, oh, I hope they hit, hit the vintage stuff and picked up an amplifier and used it to smash the. Oh, what do you think it sounded like? <laughs> Do you remember, um, what was it? It wasn't, it wasn't Huckleberry Hound. It was the other one. Uh, one of the Canna-Barbera characters. El Cabong. Do you remember El Cabong? Wow, that's probably, I, El Cabong, he, he had a guitar. <laughs> Quick Draw McGraw, that's right. Quick Draw McGraw had El Cabong. And he'd hit you with the fucking guitar and it would go, come on! And would have the noise. That's what it sounded like. Because I was thinking of um, the very end of the first Bill and Ted movie when they're playing in the garage and George Carlin has to assure you that they get better. <laughs> that's what I'm picturing the fall sounding like. Yeah. It, uh, it's just, I. Is it bad that I cared more about the guitar? Like also, I when you here's the thing when you're trying to get away from the scene of the crime. After this, are you really going to put in that much effort? Just stay down. They'll be coming for you shortly. It's probably a better idea. Police review videos from five different ring cameras, which showed a vehicle driving around the area that resembled the suspect 2009 four door silver Kia Spectra. Equipment trailer, uh, burglary was 
An equipment trailer burglary was reported around the same time. Are you telling me this asshole actually stole a trailer too? Load with guitars? Yeah, he stole a fucking trailer to load with stolen fucking guitars. I bet Maybe he, he was trying to feed the man from Mars from that Blondie song. Yes, the original white girl rap. We try to pretend like that one. That song. We try to pretend like that one didn't happen. I'm going to request it now. So, um, there is actually a video for it. and It's, 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 don't go look at the video is terrible. Yeah, it'll be sad. It's so 80s. All right. Um, it's the first thing we learned tonight. The hard way. Is, um. What? Don't don't if 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 in the course of your robbery you happen to fall three stories, call it a night. Take the L. Get the free ride to the hospital. Just deal with the shit later. The universe has told you you're not stealing guitars today. We've learned when you're fucking with historic. Navy SEAL equipment. You're probably not capable of good judgment. No. This is probably, I'm willing to bet this was not the first bad idea in Kendall Russ's life. No. I think there have been a series of, of decisions since this. Uh, we've, we've learned that um, if you're going to the internet for information about a topic, maybe check multiple sources. And also ask a 14 year old. It's it's amazing how many problems in life can be resolved by simply asking a 14 year old. Thing is, like I've learned recently that some distressingly young kids watch this show. God damn. So you don't, yeah, like I made a TikTok about it and people were like, well, I started watching when I was 13, and I'm like, don't. Tell me that. <laughs> Here's the thing you might not know if you are a whippersnapper watching this show. Mm. First of all, go to bed. This is inappropriate for you. Yes. Second, the older you get, the more you're going to need to ask a 14 year old. Yeah. Because my ass is 45. And last time I watched the Grammys, I didn't recognize any. There's some there's some chick doing, I think, Verizon commercials or something. I know I'm supposed to know who she is. I can tell by the editing. It's a celebrity endorsement. I mean, I didn't know who anyone at the Grammy was, but that's because they shut out the weekend. But anyway, um, <laughs> I have a little sore point. Disney, uh, we've learned that just because it's oh, it, no one complains the first eight times the first seven times doesn't mean the eighth time is going to be okay you fucking knew better you're, you're not you got you had to fucking have you where have you been it's not like you just figured it out now like did, did, were you stuck on space fucking mountain come on um we've learned that chicken tenders are not the purview of your local police department I don't know why we had to explain that to you, but there, there's over and over and over. There are no chicken police. And if there is a chicken jail, people aren't in there because it's chicken jail. They, they, why would you be in chicken jail? Don't ask me. I'm, I, I have, this is not my department. Maybe that fake story I fell for about the guy shoving a live chicken up his butt, that would get you in chicken jail. <laughs> if it was real. This is why I always, whenever I see something like that, my first thing to do is, oh, fuck. And I Google proper names from the story, and if it comes up, ah, there you go. Someone fuck it. That's the final thing we learned this week. Um, just because you can type a name into Twitter does not mean it is the person you were tweeting about. Okay, that's uh, just it. Check the bio. 
And um Yeah, just just yeah. God damn it. Double check things before you say things in public. That would be really embarrassing. No, these are the same people who just say shit. Right. Like I should have Googled that story before I tweeted it. That's not half as embarrassing as me standing up in front of a state Senate and declaring that they're putting litter boxes in schools. This is the kind of people who are like, hey, do you know your flies open? Hey, everybody, this guy's flies open. Did you notice that? What happened? Did you forget? These are also the kind of people that do their own research. I hate it here. We never should have turned on the Large Hadron Collider. Have don't, I mentioned that lately? Don't start again. 